But I will ask you the question about uh, Dr. Furman. In your practice, are, are, are you seeing people who think that they are, um, you know, that they're healthy, that they're somewhat bulletproof because of their their lifestyle, and then they're coming in with with dementia, which Dr. Furman is seeing in his. Yes, practice. I completely agree. But I'll expound on it. Uh, what uh, Dr. Cousins was mentioning in science is called type three diabetes. So when you have lots of carbohydrates. I don't care if you just take the white sugar and eat it or the honey, yes, the organic honey or the agave syrup, or if you're a little more tricky, where you take white potatoes, or you take pasta, or you take bread that breaks down in 20 to 30 minutes to the same sugars. Uh, what it does is there's a mechanism within the brain. It doesn't have the ability to process those sugars. And one thing that easily go through the blood brain barrier are those sugars. And it erodes the tissue mass of the brain and actually throws off the pathways of the glio cells and the neurons there. And now we know a lot more uh, about how it interacts with enzymatic activity and bacteria from the intestinal tract going up the entire nervous system of the spine and turning on the serotonin receptor site. So when people are, are having those symptoms like low blood sugar, as an example, from overeating sugar, you get low blood sugar initially until you manifest diabetes. Everyone, unless you're born with type 2 diabetes, you basically were low blood sugar first. And then literally you start to have that depressed feeling, that dragging feeling because the serotonin receptor site's not working because the pathway to get there up the nervous system and spine is skewed. So that's type three diabetes and just read about it so we don't have to go further. The second thing is B12 deficiencies. So uh, to me, the number one reason people have uh, dementia, I don't care if you're meat eaters, or dairy eaters or fish eaters, or all you eat is a paleo diet or the silly ketogenic diet. Uh, by the way, they have more dementia than we do. And starting, matter of fact, Gabriel was an impetus for me to start looking into this because Hippocrates, since we've been around 70 years now, uh, we're the come to place uh, in the vegan community to prove that on a healthy plant based diet, you didn't have B12 deficiencies. And we had. So many people that didn't, we actually believe that. And we held a major international conference here on the campus 30 years ago, maybe. And he whispered in one ear and the other guy sitting next to me, did you see the Framingham study? And when it, you talk to eggheads like us about Framingham, we get on our knees. You know, that's a really great. They're the people who talked about cholesterols and lipids. They got a little bit wrong, but at least they talked about it mm -hmm. 50 years ago. And when I looked into it, I was shocked because what they told us is that blood tests then, and sadly, they haven't changed them, gives you misinformation on B12 deficiencies. So they may say you have B12, you don't. You don't have B12, you do. So I go completely bonkers because, you know, here I am the director and I've got to tell, at least I feel I should always tell the truth. And I couldn't find any data that supported that. And so I started to look at this myself. And I recognized that about 70% of the population, because we do this very elaborate test, nutritional test, that I'll also put a caveat in, checks exactly what Gabriel spoke about, the genetic processing of proteins. So it's called the Krebs cycle. And we actually know if you digest proteins better than carbs and fats, or if you're better fat, you know, we used to speculate on that just looking at people you know, and, and watching, watching. You don't have to do that anymore. We just do tests and say, oh yeah, that person's a, a metabolizer of protein. That, that one's great at fat. That one's great at, you know, at carbohydrate, but not too many are great at carbohydrate. And, and let's not misunderstand what Gabriel and I are saying. We're not eating cooked processed carbohydrates. Our diet in great part is a carbohydrate, but it's a simple carbohydrate. So it breaks down. And what the other confusing part of this conversation is, is that most proteins come from high quality carbohydrates, not from proteins. So as an example, the sprout digests in your body like a carbohydrate, but it's chock filled of amino acids. So the number two is that. So 70% of us lack B12. If you want to get dementia or lose your memory, knock yourself out, get onto a B12 deficiency. If you want to get dementia, basically, 
go ahead. And then there was a mantra in the vegan community that I used to participate in, let's be honest, you know, 50 years ago when I started this, you don't know, it'd be, be, you get everything from your food. Well, that's wrong. Because what B12 is, is a soil-based microorganism. They actually have to feed our animals B12 because the soil is so bad. And so how many people are eating raw food and not cleaning it well? Because that's where the B12 is. So the one supplement I can basically tell you everyone should take is a food-based living B12. That's a bacteria. And most on the market are not alive and they're not food-based bacteria. There's some synthetic knockoff that a pharmaceutical came up with that mimics methylcyabalamine, which isn't really B12. You need a bacteria living. You took ours out of the capsule and put it under a mic. It's going to be dancing like this. And the last thing is, let's be clear, it's not all food. You know, you're talking about food with us. It's lack of, of brain use. And this is for sure. I mean, if you look at the research, you look at Dr. Emmett's research on this. You look at the work that was done uh, by the luminosity scientists who basically said, get people who have early stage memory loss, get them to do 10, 15 minutes of mental exercises on a computer every day. And guess what? They were reversing like a shocking amount, like 80 some percent of them reversing early stage dementia. So there's a lot to this. Sorrow, loss does it, trauma does it, loneliness does it, you know. Look at how many people today are lonely after this fiasco we all just went through. So, but food is, if you lack B12 and eat too much sugar, you are a big candidate. And I don't know, I forget the number you gave, but I would imagine it's four or five times greater chance with sugar and certainly maybe another three or four times with B12. And who doesn't eat a lot of sugar and who, who has enough B12? You know, meat and dairy eaters, by the way, which you've been lied to by the industries, who they say they're getting B12 from it. They're not getting B12 from that. The animals in a factory farm, not out on the grass. Don't give me the free range stuff. That's a propaganda story. There's no such thing as free range. They're all factory farms. They're self-regulated by the industry. It's all nonsense for white yuppies to feel good about killing an animal to eat it, which is completely, absolutely unnecessary. Okay, thank you for that. So I want to just carry it on a little further. Thank you, Brian. It's it's good. So first of all, people are getting Alzheimer's, mild cognitive impairment is a kind of a nice term for it, <laughs> um, from a variety of sources. Yeah. Okay, we have pesticides, we have herbicides, we have um, you know five G. Uh, besides a poor diet, okay? That's the first thing. Second thing is actually the brain makes its own insulin. Yes. This is important to understand. And when we take in too much sugar, the brain becomes insulin resistant. And that's where you get this type three diabetes. And that's that's part of it is that, that literally your brain becomes insulin resistant and the cells can't use the glucose. So, so the that's, brain has like beta cells in it to produce insulin. Is that what you're saying? Like not so separate. Well, the the neurons produce the insulin. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So, but just to understand that's, it's an important thing to, to get it. Now, when we too much, the brain be, is, it, it can't handle it because too much insulin is being produced and it, shuts down its ability to respond to insulin to bring sugar into the brain cells. <music>